Amen. What a great day. As you know, we've been in Deuteronomy, and uh, the, uh, we talked last week about them tearing up the people and beating them all up and, and throwing them out, running them out of land, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about worship today. And worship is that thing that we all have in our heads, what it's like. My guess is all of you have in your minds, worship should go like this. Well, sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's a whole other experience. Sometimes we come expecting one thing and get something else. That's worship. Our scripture passage this morning is in Deuteronomy chapter 12. And in the bullet, I think it says 4 through 14, but I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 1 just to kind of give that little bit of extra background to remind you from last time. Deuteronomy chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. These are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess. As long as you live in the land, destroy completely all the places on the high mountains and on the hills and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, burn their Asherah poles in the fire, cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. But you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all your tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. To that place you must go. There bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, what you have vowed to give and your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. There in the presence of the Lord your God, you and your family shall eat shall and shall rejoice in everything you have put your hand to because the Lord your God has blessed you. You're not to do as we do here today, everyone as he sees fit, since you have not yet reached the resting place and the inheritance the Lord your God is giving you. But you will cross the Jordan and settle in the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. And he will give you rest from all your enemies around you so that you will live in, a, in safety. Then to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name, there you will bring everything I command you, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, and all the choice possessions you have vowed to the Lord. And you there rejoice before the Lord your God, your sons and daughters, your men servants, maid servants, and the Levites from your towns, who have no allotment in inher of inherit or inheritance of their own. Be careful not to sacrifice your burnt offerings anywhere you please. Offer them only at the place the Lord will choose in one of your tribes, and there observe everything I command you. So the first thing he talks about, and we repeated it over and over and over again, the Lord your God. Have you all caught on yet? The one and only God, and he's yours. You belong to him, he belongs to to you. Christianity is different in that aspect. Our God, the one and the only God, cares about you and who you are. Not only that, is He is our God. We are part of His family and who He is. That God, our God, He wants to be part of you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He's not just the man upstairs that we hear so much. I don't like that term. It lowers who He is. He is almighty, powerful, creator, savior, God. And we're to worship him. Again, worship is different to everyone. Everyone has their ways that they think, what does worship look like? But there are certain things that need to be a part of worship that we have to understand. Number one, we assemble. We're here this morning. We have a place. It's dedicated to God. 
These are his buildings. This, it's only one now, isn't it? I keep thinking other places we had three buildings. Now we have one. It's his building. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's his. It's to be used for his glory. We come together because it's good for us to be together. We challenge each other. We support each other. We are all totally different. Y'all figured that out yet? No two people are alike. But we come together in one common goal and purpose. To worship Almighty God. So, he tells us to assemble. Even loners want to be around other people. We all are made for relationships. We like to be with someone else. Sure, we like our alone time, but we, we can only stand that so long. Then we need what? We need to get around somebody. Now, you all know I'm a real people person, and I get lonely in my office a little bit. I have to get up and walk around and go talk to other people. Drive the rest of them nuts. I understand that. But I can't stand to be just by myself for too long. I can handle it a little while, and I like it sometimes. But I'm a relationship person. I want to be around other people, find out what's going on. Sometimes that seems nosy. Sometimes it seems like I'm messing in your business. No, I just want to get to know you. I just want to be part of it. I enjoy getting to know people. I'm still trying to learn where you all sit so I can know where you're here or not. I was just looking just a minute ago and, oh, there they are. They're here. Oh, oh, wow, oh, yeah. Because they usually sit over here, over here, this one's over here. You know, and I can't keep up. So if you get a call and say, I've been missing you, say, I was there. You were sitting in the wrong place. <laughs> I have relationship with you because I know this group sits here, and I know this group sits here, and then that, this one roams around. And I know which ones kind of roam. I know the ones that are supposed to be up here. <laughs> But you see, their relationships I've built over the years. I know who they are. I know where they belong. And even though they change places, you're still part of this family. And when someone's out of the family is missing, we miss them. And it hurts when they're gone. We group gather together to worship a loving father. They gather together to worship the God that brought them out of bondage and slavery from Egypt. He brought us out of slavery to sin and the bondage of things in our lives, the things that hold us down, the things that keep us away, the hopelessness, the meaninglessness of life. You know, those things hold us down and hold us back. We have to worship the God that relieved that from us, that lifted that from us, that delivered us from that bondage and slavery. Because he did. We all know what it feels like to carry a heavy burden, physically and emotionally. All of you in this room know what heavy burdens are. And sometimes, most times, those emotional burdens are heavier than the physical burdens. When we gather and put the one purpose on the God, our Father, our God, when we put that focus on that, we can let those burdens go if for no other, re other time than just the time we're here. And when you have other people around you help you, support you, help relieve some of those burdens. You have friends in this room, you have friends out of this room that say, what can I do to help you when you're going through a tough time? All of you do. And most of the time you just say nothing. Why? 
I can take care of it myself. I'm tough. I don't care how big that burden is, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Guess what? No, you can't. Some of those burdens are so heavy, you don't know what to do. Some of you feel strangled. You feel smothered. Because these burdens are so heavy on you. And you need to let that, that burden get lifted from you. And you're going to have to help get others to help pray for you, to support you, to help you lift that burden. And we have a God, our God, the one and only, the true God that says, I will lift those burdens if you will let me. And we bow up and say no. Then he says we're to bring our sacrifices. Now, when you're reading the Old Testament and when you think of sacrifices, the first thing you go to is that cow or calf or something on an altar. I know, that's exactly what most of your heads go, we don't do that. I'm not killing no animal and put it on their sacrifice. That's not what I'm talking about. The first sacrifice it says to bring is what kind? That absolution? Ooh, what's that? I need to confess <laughs> and tell God I've messed up. What? You see, we're supposed to gather and bring that absolution offering and sacrifice. That means, Lord, I'm turning all this junk over to you because I don't want to carry it around with me anymore. Do we do that? Do we confess? You know, we always think of the Catholics are the ones that have the confessional and they do all this and you have, the and you have to do that. That's not what I'm talking about. You do not have to come to me, I promise, and confess your sins. Okay, just saying. I'm not sure I want to hear them. Okay. But, but, we better be carrying them to him. Number one, if you don't think he already knows it, you're fooling yourself. He's just waiting for us to admit it and turn it over to him. And when he lifts that burden, you'll find yourself going, I can breathe just a little better anyway. Then what else are we supposed to bring? We're supposed to bring our praises. We're supposed to lift up and rejoice. We're supposed to show him how much we love and care for him. Do you spend time praising God? I hope so. That's why we sing together. And we rejoice together. And everybody needs to rejoice sometimes. Because we can just waller in it just so long. We can just go, oh, woe is us. We got this burden on us and that burden. And if that child does that one more time, I'm going to scream. Amen. That's right. <laughs> you know, we all have those burdens that come on us. If I have to take something down and figure out what this world is trying to tell us as rules and regulations that they're making us follow. If I have to jump through this many hoops just to get this signed up for this thing or that thing or pay those taxes or any of those things, if I have to sign one more thing, I'm going to scream. If one more person tells me how to do my job, I'm going to go run out the back door yelling. We all have those burdens that are on us. And we need to take time to say, wait a minute. i got a whole lot of other stuff going on really well. You know what? I got up this morning breathing. Amen. I'm here in this warm church. Some of you are warm, some of you are cold. I know. <laughs> There's no two persons the same in here. One is either cold or warm. I'm just telling you right now. That's the way it is. But we're all here. We have a chance to be together. We should be excited. We should be going, yes, all right. We were talking about the Super Bowl happened last week or something. I watched it. I yelled. I went, really? A few times? 
But, when was the last time we got that excited for baptism? I mean, we should have been cheering and going, yes, all right. And we did. I heard a lot of amens, a lot of excitement. And it is one of the most exciting things we do. We should be, number one, we should do it every week. Number two is we should be excited. We have a Savior that saved us from all the junk of the world. We need to be excited about it. And sometimes I look out here and you're kind of going, well, well I'm here. When are you going to be done? I'm here, but somebody made me come. I didn't want to come, but thought it might be a good idea. We should come go, wow, what's he going to do today? Is Wes going to do a hand swing? <laughs> we should be excited about being together. Then it says, don't come empty-handed. Ooh. You know those tithes and offerings and first fruits of the first best born and all that. I'm not going to make this into a total tithing sermon, <laughs> but you're going to get hit a little bit. Folks, God gave us the abilities and talents that we have to make a living. God gives us the opportunities we have. Some of you forget, I think, that all that we have, sometimes I forget that all that we have belongs to Him. Amen. So, and He tells them straight up, all the blessings you have, I'm giving to you. You need to bring your first born of your herds, you need to bring the first fruits, you need to bring your best, you need to bring your tithes and offerings to him. Now, people will go out of here saying all they talk about is money at that church. <laughs> you know me, I don't talk about money very often. And our church is wonderful. I'm just going to say right now, and I hate to brag on you, because when I do, y'all, the giving goes down. I don't know why. <laughs> Every time I brag on this church about how great they've done about giving, the giving goes down. Oh, well, we must be doing great. I don't have to give. It has nothing to do with how our budget's going or how our money is going with if you give or not. God doesn't need our money. He does not need it. Amen. We need to give it. Amen. That is part of worship. We're talking about putting this online giving thing, and I go back and forth with it, because this is a new day and time, and young people like to give online, and I agree with that. That's fine. I don't care. They want to give, give. I don't care. You know. But part of me goes... That takes away a big part of our worship. Because giving is part of our worship. That's who we are. We are a giving people. We are people that should be generous. We should say, oh boy. And, and in the New Testament it says, God loves a cheerful giver. When was the last time you laughed hysterically as you wrote a check? Yeah, I know. And the bigger it is, the less you laugh, isn't it? Yeah, I know. However, there's nothing that should give us more joy than to be able to write that check out and say, you know, this is to my God. God, my God, who loves me so much that he's blessing with this. I look around my house and go... I don't deserve this. I don't deserve all that God's given me. I should be excited to give. And we should spend time in thanksgiving. Are we a thankful people? I am the world's worst at writing thank you notes. I'm just saying. I try. 
people will give me something, I want to write a thank you note, and oh, maybe I'll get to it, maybe I won't. I just don't like to. I, I admit it. Now, I have, there's other people in my life that send me thank you notes or send me things, and I appreciate them so much. And I appreciate that kind of person that can do that and will. I think, wow, I wish I was more like that and could do that. So if you've been expecting a thank you note and you wonder where, <laughs> that's why. But we need to be thankful people. God has done all of this for us. Look around this room. Thursday night we had the biggest attendance we've had in this building so far. It was an amazing night. If you missed it, we tried to tell you. <laughs> I can't thank the women in ministry group, team, whatever you want to call them, for bringing this, for bringing Ashley Smith Robinson to us. She ministered to me. But everybody that comes into our building that's not been here before went, I had no idea. This is so not, I didn't have any idea. They see it from the road, and then they come in, and then they start going back in. They go, I didn't know it was this big. On Sunday mornings, it looks this small, which is a good problem to have. We're going to make it shrink some more. Keep on coming. But you see, God is blessing us in so many ways. We need to be a thankful people. Lord, thank you for all you're doing in our lives. Now, some of you say, well, but I've had a rough time, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm thankful. Well, okay, we all have stuff that we don't like, but there's always something in your life you can be thankful for. You have a parent that looks out for you some. You have a child that we can never express the joy they bring. A grandchild that all the grandparents go, yes! There's another person in your life that supports you and just gives you the right words of encouragement when you need them the most. And there's the God that we have that lifts those burdens if we'll let him. And the final part of our worship time is commitment and dedication. You see, when we come in the presence of Almighty God, we have to respond. Now, does that mean you have to walk the aisle? No, that has nothing to do with your response. Walking the aisle is part of a response. But we all must respond in some way. We can either say, yes, you know, I'm going to try to do things a little differently this week. Or we can respond and say, nah, same old, same old. That was nice. It was fun. It was good to see the folks, but... I'm not going to change because I like the way I live. I like the way I do things. I like wallowing in my sin. I like being down and grumpy. I like things that don't change. Everybody goes on about change in the church. Y'all changing everything. Everything's changing in the church. Well, if it's not changing, it's not moving. Think about it. <laughs> My body's changed a whole lot in the last few years. <laughs> Keeps getting bigger sometimes. It's sure got a lot more aches and pains than it used to have. It sure don't move as quick as it used to. I remember when I had energy all the time. And now it's like, <sighs> am I about done yet? I'm tired, you know. You see, we change. Like it or not, we change. Now, there are some things about my life today I like better than I did 20 years ago. There really are. There are some things about my life today that I'm going, huh. Most of them are just the old age stuff. The relationship stuff's getting better all the time. My walk with God's been getting better all the time. And you want to talk about relieve a lot of burdens? That'll relieve a lot of burdens. You see, worship is much more than coming together 
and look it up here and hoping that the preacher keeps us interested and the choir does the right thing and that we get to sing a song we like. That's not really worship. Those are parts of it. Worship is us bringing ourselves with our hands full. You saw the things he asked them to bring with them. And saying, God, it's all yours. My life, my talent, my experiences, my knowledge, my wisdom, my caring, my encouragement. All those things we bring and leave them at the altar to God, saying, you blessed me with them. They're yours. I worship and adore you because of who you are. Not because of what he's done, because of who he is. He is worthy of our worship. He loves you and cares for you and wants a relationship with you and provided Jesus Christ to come and give his life so that we could have that relationship with him. God with us, Jesus Christ. What do you bring today to worship? What are you going to leave at the altar for our God, your God, the one and only, the one that loves you so much he gave you his son? That's what we do. That's what we bring. That's why we worship. Leave your burdens here. Go out the door rejoicing and celebrating and telling the world what a glorious God we serve. That is real worship. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for blessing us. And Lord, we confess that we mess up so much. And we try to do it on our own so many times. We need you. We need your presence. We need your grace and mercy. Come into our lives today and fill us with your hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our time of invitation. It is a time to respond. If you would like to accept Christ as your Savior, this would be a great time to do that. If you would like to unite with Rosemont, we would love to have you as part of our family. Any decision you may have, I don't know what they are, but we invite you to come as we sing.